Hi, everyone, and welcome to Spotlight with Scientists in School. Today is International Day of Women and Girls in Science, and to help us celebrate, we have Mariam Sagai. She is the winner of the Junior Breakthrough Challenge, and she is the first Canadian to win. That win comes with bragging rights, but it also comes with a scholarship fund for Mariam, money for a new lab for her high school, a Cole McTavish Public High School in Fort McMurray, and also money for her science teacher, Mrs. Blatica, who helped inspire her. Miriam joins us today from Fort McMurray, but first let's watch a short clip of her winning video on quantum tunneling. But let me tell you something about waves. They are not perfect. For example, a beam of light doesn't perfectly reflect off of the surface. A small fraction of light can get through. Waves won't bounce off perfectly, so neither will the electron wave. Sometimes the wave can slip through the barrier. When the wave is in the barrier, the chances of finding an electron there goes down by a lot. But if the barrier is thin enough, the wave can reach the other side before it dies off. So what does that mean? Remember, the wave tells us how likely it is to find the electron there. This means there's a chance we can find our electron on the other side of the barrier. Or in there too. Once it's on the other side, we can say the electron tunneled through the barrier. This is quantum tunneling, and that's how subatomic particles can walk through walls. Okay, so little elementary particles can walk through walls, but I can't, because my body's made up of more than a quadrillion of these quantum objects, and the odds of all of them tunneling through the wall is practically impossible. So why does quantum tunneling even matter? It's the reason we're alive. Quantum tunneling allows nuclear fusion. Sounds familiar? That's how our sun releases huge amounts of energy that makes life on our planet possible. So how can you quantum tunnel at home? You already are. It's one of the ways our DNA mutates, among other roles that quantum physics plays in our biology. Quantum physics makes it seem like the world is playing cheat codes on us, but it isn't. It's how the universe works. Maybe the quantum world is telling us that when faced with an obstacle, there's a small chance we can defy expectations and reach barriers. Hi everyone and welcome to Spotlight. We are celebrating International Day of Girls and Women in Science and we are thrilled that we are doing that with Miriam Sagai. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. This is so great that you are with us celebrating today. I'm just going to let everyone know that Miriam, you are the winner of the International Junior Breakthrough Challenge, which is a, I guess, a global science competition where you have to take a scientific principle and explain it through the use of video. Is that correct? Yeah. And you chose quantum oh. tunneling. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an easy uh, concept. So why did you choose that? Um, I started off with something different. I was, I knew I was still going to be hovering in like the area of physics. Right. Um, but I came across quantum tunneling when I was watching a different video and it, they just mentioned it so briefly and I've never heard of it before. Like I've heard of other quantum phenomena, like entanglement, superposition and stuff, but I've never heard of tunneling and I immediately searched it up and I was like, what is this? And it was really whack. Um, I never imagined that particles would just like appear in places they're not supposed to not supposed to be right um so yeah it was really cool and i just wanted to dive into that and make a video about it um i've watched that video and i'm not a physics person i'm more a biology and chemistry um i found it fascinating for many reasons first of all it's just three minutes long and you explain quantum tunneling um, you've taken something that's complex and you've made it very simple which you know humans don't usually do that that we're the opposite right we take we take simple things and make our lives complex right yeah. yeah so you had to do the exact opposite but it's also uh really funny like you're you're funny in that video is that like just it just came naturally or how did you go about videotaping it did you have to do a lot of takes um i took two takes the first one because i realized i was speaking a bit too slow uh, and so the final cut was the second take, but yeah, um, as I was scripting, I was just trying to imagine like anyone that knows what an atom is should be able to understand this concept. And that's what I based the video off of. And I tried to like avoid a lot of scientific vocabulary, which is how the dice came around and I avoided formulas and stuff. Uh, yeah, because I wanted to make sure that the viewer wouldn't be intimidated by the topic and that anyone could understand it. 
Yeah, because the title alone can be intimidating, right? You might think, oh gosh, quantum tunneling, but you did exactly that. Like you have the dice, you have some uh, graphics in there. It's really, really entertaining. So you do the video, you send it off, and then you probably put it out of your mind, think, okay, what are the chances I'm going to win? How did you find out that you were the winner? Yeah, so yeah, when I sent out the video, I was immediately like, yeah, that's it. It's done. Like, it's like one little drop in an ocean. Like, nothing's going to come out of this. Um, so yeah, like semifinals and then finals happened and I was like, oh, that's it. Like we're done. This is <laughs> as far as it's going to get. <laughs> and I was already very surprised to get that far. Um, and yeah, I found out, um, my prince, my school principal invited me and a few of my friends to come to school to film like an educational video of some sort. And we're like, okay. And, um, <laughs> we went to a room and there was like Saul Khan. Khan's uh, podcast video with astronaut uh, Scott Kelly right and they were talking about the Breakthrough Junior Challenge and stuff and I was like completely oblivious like oh wow that's cool <laughs> having no idea that it was gonna turn towards me and yeah it just it was still a complete surprise for me you know I saw that video and you're right you didn't see it coming at all you're just sitting there thinking oh yeah they're talking about the Breakthrough Challenge and then it's that I knew there were like, judges what? too Right. Like, I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so what has it been like since the win? Have you had oh, a lot of congr a lot of congratulatory, uh, congratulatory tweets, right? A lot of messages. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, so much that I was like, maybe it's time I should get Twitter because <laughs> there was so much going on. And I was I yeah, um, like uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau yes. and some actors i think and carly claus a model a bunch of nasa people like wow yeah. <laughs> yeah anybody from the big bang i don't think so no oh, okay we're gonna have to let them know <laughs> uh, how did your parents feel about the win oh they were ecstatic <laughs> we yeah. were, were all just like buzzing <laughs> buzzing yeah for sure i bet and um so your high school is uh, mctavish is that correct out in fort mcmurray mctavish uh high school they also win some money as well what do they plan to do with the money that the school wins yeah so the hundred thousand dollars goes towards a science lab or to renovate a current science lab at school so yeah they're gonna get a lot of cool things and a lot of new equipment and everything uh, for a school lab yeah, they'll have to name the lab after you. You're going to have to get some, some uh, you know, nameplate on the door. Um, and also, I also read that your teacher also gets some money. Mrs. Yeah, she gets, yeah, she gets a $50,000 cash prize. How? And what is she doing with that? Do you know? Um, I think she said she'll pay off student debt, like the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So Miriam, had you always wanted to enter the Breakthrough Challenge? Had you ever thought about it before this year? Yes, I've known about it for five years and I never participated until this year. Um, because, you know, a lot of the videos are like really high in production quality or at least the more finalist ones. And I kind of was intimidated by that because I knew like what I was capable in video making and I knew it wasn't going to be like so high and flashy thing. And I thought like, I, I should try anyways. And, you know, the editing's supposed to enhance the video. So uh, the funny thing is my editing was mostly done on Google Slides. Oh, for okay. animations. So I, I have a, I already do like digital art. So I drew them up on my computer and put the little images on slides and added, you know, like slide, regular like Google Slides transitions and like screen recorded me presenting it on my computer, clicking through, and those were the animations. Um, wow. So I just want to spread the message that you don't need really professional uh, software material or expensive things. Just like try to use what you have and it will probably be good. Um, did you always love science? Yes. You, I, yes. Since childhood, like, you know, like any five-year-old always asking why. Yes. Um, and just keep you just kept on asking why and kept looking for answers. And yeah, it was always science. So did you have supportive family, someone you looked up to or a teacher perhaps? Like who was your inspiration along the way? Um, there were definitely like a lot of people uh, 
with different roles like throughout my life like it yeah there were like a lot of people like along the way um my parents definitely whenever I ask a question they you know if they know the answer they'll tell me or if they don't we go to the library and find a book about it or search it up on the internet or something um teachers have also been instrumental here and there um about science and and definitely Miss Vladika which is why I picked her right um, we love talking about a lot of like hypothetical science things or like a bunch of questions and um try to find the answers together and they a lot of the time these questions take us to interesting places so i actually saw you on an interview miriam where you said that you had never seen black female scientists until you saw the movie hidden figures and it uh, speaks of the movies about the three female um, mathematicians that um, were on the NASA mission. Um, why do you think it's important for girls to have visible role models of other females and boys as well, right? To see girls in those positions. Yeah, I think um, it helps you like materialize the fact that you can be in that place that um, you know, if a little girl, little boy, or someone's like watching um, and seeing people who look like them, people who make them feel represented in those positions, it's not so, it's not really fantasy. Like you, right. it feels more real and it more doesn't tangible. seem like kind of, yeah, it doesn't seem like a far off dream and you're like, oh, I can be there. Yeah, I think, um, the first time I've heard of woman in science was, or like seeing a woman in science was uh, when I watched a video about uh, Marie Curie and yes. another one about Jane Goodall. And those that was the first time I saw woman in science. And then black woman in science was hidden figures. And that's quite late in junior high. Like I was in grade eight or grade nine. <laughs> and then and there seems to be like that underlying, I guess, like stereotype that like, um science is like masculine you know since it's like all male dominated and stuff um and we yeah we need to see more women in science and show more girls um women in science to show like it's not it's not masculine <laughs> like i don't know how to say it it's just yeah right. like it's for anyone everyone like everyone. i don't yeah <laughs> You know, I've had a conversation before with someone who said that um, girls need to see other girls, but it's just as important for little boys to see girls in these positions. Do you think that is that is true? Oh, yeah, because if, if they see it, they'll be more accepting. <laughs> That's right, right? Starts to change the culture and the way um, everybody thinks about it. That's for sure. What do you think about a day like today that we're celebrating International Day of Women in Science, women and girls in science, and that you are now going to be the role model for young Black girls? Um, it means a lot to be in this position. And I love how we have an international like this day to celebrate it all and remind everyone like science is important. Science is cool. And anyone, especially women and girls can be in science. Science is cool. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get rid of those stereotypes, right? All stereotypes. Yeah. Science is cool. Definitely. So Miriam, part of the prize is also you winning some prize money as well. Correct? Is that like a scholarship? Yeah, scholarship it's all scholarship, fund. yeah. It's all a scholarship fund. What do you plan to do after you're done high school? Um, I'm almost done. So I've applied to several universities in Canada and, and in the States. Um, I hope on pursuing a bachelor's in science at one of these schools. I'm not sure where, you know, acceptances haven't been sent out, decisions haven't been made. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And eventually, probably become a researcher or someone um, like to try and help improve uh, science education and be a science communicator. Do you think it'll be physics that you're studying? Like, is that your passion? Do you think you'll pursue <laughs> physics? That's the first step right now that could yeah. change, but yeah. What do you do for fun? You must do stuff outside of um, school as well. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have my piano over here. This is, I played piano since I think I was in kindergarten or five or something. Yeah. Um, I draw and paint. Um, 
I'm in the school band, so I'm a percussionist. And yeah, I love hanging out with my friends and going on walks in the middle of nowhere and hiking. So yeah. Yeah, very well rounded. You got lots of talents, that's for sure. What do your what do your friends think about all this? All this fame that you've had uh, come your way? Uh, they're really excited. It was really funny because um, one of my friends helped me edit the video. Like, I didn't have the software to put it all together. So uh, he helped last minute. And he's probably like the most um, ecstatic of them all. Just like, doesn't believe it. Have you worked on any other kind of videos? Um, do you plan to explain any other concepts? Start a YouTube show? Yeah, I've been getting asked about that, about starting ah. a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and I've been considering it and I know it'll definitely make a uh, breakthrough junior challenge specific like tips and videos because I'm getting a lot of questions about those. Um, but as a science show in general, um, I think I, I would definitely start like a casual uh, show where I put out a video every now and then when I can about science. Yeah, you take some uh, very complex principles and then do these little videos online. I think that would be great. You're definitely talented um, to do that. It would be just so amazing. Well, Miriam, this has been so uh, wonderful to have the opportunity to chat with you. For some people, this might be the first time that they're hearing about you, but I have a feeling it is not going to be the last time that we hear from you. I think you have a very successful road ahead of you and all of us at Scientists in School wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for joining me once again on Spotlight with Scientists in School and a very big thank you to Miriam for helping us celebrate women and girls in science. If you would like to find out more about our educational charity, head to our website, scientistsinschool.ca. There you will find all the information about our virtual classroom and community workshops, Party Like a Scientist and our four week STEM club. We've also got Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram. We will see you next time on Spotlight as we head to the East Coast. Thanks so much for joining me and see you next time.